Ah! Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Adam Ellis. How much of a video game should you be allowed to stream? I know this is a, this is a, Tough question, this is gonna be a very Touchy fun video. Subject. Yes, uh, should a game's publisher get to decide what you can and cannot broadcast? That's the big controversy right now and it's centered around a new game that some people have been waiting on for years, Persona 5. And be, maybe because of that long wait, developer Atlas is warning streamers, don't spoil the game for everyone else or you might lose your channel. Okay, so look, we should note, first off, you can stream the game, just not past a certain point. And while this is hardly the first time a game developer has limited what can and can't be streamed of a new game, Atlas's warning sparked anger from some streamers who say the company is trying to mess with their livelihoods. It's also been a reminder that streaming still kind of operates in a legal gray area that exists mostly because publishers have, for the most part, gotten on board with it. Uh, but that does exist to some degree with their support and that its future might be more precarious than we like to think. So stay with us here. Look, I'm sure a lot of people are shouting fair use at the screen right now and we'll discuss that a little bit more in depth, but maybe an overview of what's happening right now is in order. Okay, so first off, what did Atlas do to spark all the outrage? Well, so as we noted, it centers around Persona 5, which has been out for several months in Japan, but only released worldwide yesterday. And along with the game's release, Atlas posted a little note on their site about streaming. They wrote, simply put, we don't want the experience to be spoiled for people who haven't played the game. Our fans have waited for years for the game to come out, and we really want to make sure they can experience it fully as a totally new adventure. And then they dropped some rules on streamers. No major story spoilers, each video can't be longer than 90 minutes, and here's the big one, don't stream past the in-game date of July 7th. Does that mean something special happens on July 7th? I don't just know, maybe, possibly. <laughs> I bet there's a twist. So we can all support protection from spoilers, right? Right, and then Atlas signed off with this warning. If you decide to stream past July 7th, you do so at the risk of being issued a content ID claim or worse, a channel strike or account suspension. Hmm. Well then. Okay. <laughs> As you can imagine, when it came to that part, some people lost their shit. Atlas. Lots of streamers accused Atlas of messing with their livelihoods. Someone even tweeted a picture of their copy of Persona 5 in the toilet saying, this is what I think of your streaming policy, Atlas. Someone. You showed him. Right, sure did. <laughs> now you've got to, now you've got to fish that disc back out of your toilet. Gross. <laughs> uh, someone even responded using a quote from a character in Persona 5. When someone tells us not to do something, it makes us want to do it even more. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true though. Indie publisher Devolver Digital, I love this, also joined the fray and sniped Atlas's policy with its own guidelines for its games. Those guidelines included, number one, spoil it real hard. Number two, you must smile. And three, if you fail, verbally blame your poor skills and not the game. Yeah, no one's gonna abide by three, <laughs> come on. Now, not everyone was so bold, though. The folks over at Super Best Friends Play, they apparently got the Atlas news in the middle of a recording session and they promptly canceled their Let's Play of the game. That sucks. Others brought up the fact that the game has already been released in Japan and there are currently videos on YouTube that contain plenty of spoilers. Yeah, kind of kind of puts like pokes a hole in that whole no spoiler argument, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But as some posters on NeoGAF pointed out, Atlas in Japan had the same restrictions on the Japanese launch too, so it's not like the rest of us are being singled out, and the policy has been in place for months already. We just didn't speak enough Japanese to notice it. Well, we should all learn Japanese. <laughs> we should also point out that Alice, not the first company to issue restrictions on what can and can't be streamed. There's been a long line of games that have come out with restrictions. Uh, just most of them didn't outright threaten to destroy your channel if you crossed them. Last year, publisher 2K completely blocked streaming of Bioshock the Collection via the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One native apps. And some games like Final Fantasy X and Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes block crucial cutscenes even years after they've been released. Hasn't Final Fantasy X been out since like 2000 or like 2002? It's been a really long time. Gameplay recording has been blocked because you entered a spoiler cutscene. Oh boy. Uh, this isn't even the first time that Atlas has been sensitive about spoiling a Persona game. After the release of Persona 4 Dancing All Night, the developer issued copyright strikes left and right to even very small channels. Persona Q had all kinds of issues as well. Yeah. So, this yeah. is nothing new, and it's a harsh reminder that you don't actually own the game that you're playing. You just basically own a license to play it yourself. Even physical copies. Sure, you own the disc, but the content on the disc is subject to license. That's one of those super weird, tricky, business, legal speak things that you own the disc, but what's on the disc? still have to have a license to do right. stuff with. You can't just do whatever you want. So mm -hmm. based off those licenses, do publishers have the right to dictate what streamers can and cannot show because they're the ones essentially issuing you the license in exchange for your money in order to play the game in ways that they allow. 
I mean, some gamers say there should be a fair use exemption for streamers, with the argument being that, well, they're creating a new body of work because they're providing commentary over the stream of a game, and no one will ever be able to have that exact same experience if and when they play the games themselves. So that unique performance should be considered transformative. Transformative. Yes. That's one of the major considerations for whether something could be considered fair use by courts, with the other considerations being the nature of the work, how much of the work is used, whether it could have negative impact on the potential market for the copyrighted work, and the purpose of the work using the copyrighted content. So, transformative. That's streaming, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that sounds like an optimistic take on it, but as it turns out, no. Video game attorney Ryan Morrison tried to educate fans on Twitter yesterday about the law. Someone asked him, so theoretically speaking, a publisher could DMCA a streamer at any time? Morrison responded, yep, we all, including Twitch, live at the mercy of publishers. Thank you, benevolent overlords. And he gave some examples of what's technically not kosher tweeting. Fan games are infringement. Streaming isn't fair use. Let's Plays aren't okay either. And at the end of the day, he said, game publishers are the ones that own their IP. Even if you own the game, you aren't protected under fair use if you want to stream it. To use an example from another industry, if you decided to stream the new Star Wars movie, you can bet that Lucasfilm would bust out its takedown lightsabers. Still, let's look at this from the gamer's perspective. It's pretty easy to see why a lot of people are confused and upset when a publisher decides to crack down like this. Streaming has been going on for years now. Gameplay videos are an entire industry. It's definitely been acknowledged by developers and publishers who, well, for the most part, are on board and supportive. Lots of people have built entire careers on streaming games, hell, we have several channels devoted to streaming and gameplay videos. Rooster Teeth started because some dude's messing around with game footage to make something new and funny. Lots of publishers even make deals with popular YouTubers to play their games. And streamers argue that they're actually helping a game's popularity by drawing attention to them. Uh, a study last year by marketing agency Navali and analyst firm Nuzu showed that lots of people use Twitch and YouTube to get interested in new games or to discover new games. According to their research, the audience for online game video content passed 500 million people by the end of 2016, and 35% of players use YouTube to discover new games. So you could argue, and many streamers do, that gameplay streams and videos are providing free marketing for publishers. Twitch is even rolling out its own program to sell the games that streamers are currently playing, so publishers will soon get a lot more data about how helpful streaming is to their bottom line. And after all, if the console makers didn't want to stream your games, then why do the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One both have streaming capabilities built into the console? I mean, Clearly, they think streaming is of some value. They've made it easy to do so on purpose. But the bottom line is that it's still the Wild West when it comes to what you can legally stream. Yes, most publishers are on board with streaming for those very reasons, but that support will stop if publishers decide streaming is losing them more in potential sales than it's gaining. And streamers are feeling nervous because many of them have built audiences based on content that they don't necessarily own. Now, the bottom line is that the publisher is holding the cards from a legal standpoint, and streaming only exists as much as the publishers allow it. If a company like Atlas wants to completely crack down on streaming of their games. We don't like it, it sucks, but they can do it. It's like, what were you saying earlier? You said, you're not wrong, you're just an asshole. Uh, in the case of a heavily story-based game like Persona 5, they've decided they don't want streamers spoiling it for the rest of the audience, and like it or not, our you know hands are tied from a legal standpoint, and they can do that. Yep. But cracking down on streamers also risks pissing off your core audience and generating waves of negative publicity. Kind of like what's happening did. right now. And we're talking about it. And no publisher wants that, which no doubt is part of the reason many have been so friendly to streaming so far. Now, what do you guys think of Alice cracking down on streaming of Persona 5? Being too harsh? Should you be able to stream whatever you want, whenever you want? Would you care? Would you even want to stream a game if a publisher doesn't want you doing it? That seems like... If you're on the free publicity angle, you just be like, well, all right, screw you too, then we won't publicize your game. Let us know how you feel about all these things in the comments. And for all your news about the complicated world of video game IPs, be sure to like this video and subscribe to The Know if you aren't already. Uh, video game attorney Ryan Morrison, wow, just had some tinnitus hit me. Hold on, we're good. Get a ring? Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, sorry, but it's, but the bottom, be with their support and it means, sorry, my contacts are all screwed up again. Why does it do this? What's oh, these lights? Okay. And